Hi, this video relates to section 15.8 of Young and Friedman's University Physics, but like I've said repeatedly, any physics textbook will cover these topics. And so this particular section is on what are called normal modes on a string. So just a little review of the topics uh, that this chapter in my book has covered up to this point. So um, a previous section was about superposition in general. Superposition is the idea that when you have two waves that are crashing into each other or interfering with each other, the, the uh, peaks, the, tr the, the positive sides add together, and then any trough uh, negative side will subtract. And so you have a kind of a, a combined wave that represents the sum uh, of, the, of the waves that have crashed into each other. So then there was another section, the immediately previous section, uh, was what if you have one end of the string fixed, um, what we call a node, so that there's a node at that, um, a zero, as it were, at one end of the string. And then let's say the other end of the string is, is in simple harmonic motion. We talked about that. So this section is now when you have two fixed ends, such as if you're playing a violin or a cello or something like that, or piano for that matter. And so you have two fixed ends, uh, such as with the stringed instruments. So accordingly, there are going to be nodes now, or zeros, um, at both ends uh, of the string. And the length of the string is going to have to be some multiple of lambda over 2. That is, lambda is the wavelength. And so uh, a full wavelength, you know, let me see if I can do this backwards um, so that you see it right. Um, so if a full wavelength of a sine wave is like that, then half of it is going to be, you know, just a little like your projectile motion. Um, and so uh, the length of the string, you know, if you have, a, if you have the whole thing uh, up in the air, uh, then that's going to be half the full wavelength. The full wavelength would be the up and the down. Uh, but uh, half of that wavelength is going to be, you know, the length of the string. And now it could be a multiple of that. So you could have um, two half, half wavelengths, which is one wavelength. Or you could have three, or you could have four. But the, the length of the string is going to be some multiple of the wavelength divided by two. So there's something we call the fundamental frequency. This is the bottom, the, the basement of the frequency. So if, let's say, uh, so we've just said that the length of the string is going to be some multiple of lambda over two. n is some multiple, one, two, three, four, five. So the length of the string is going to be n times lambda over two. Um, so, so in general, we can say that the wavelength uh, for any multiple uh, is going to be twice. We're just doing a little algebra here. Uh, we solve for lambda here. We divide by n and multiply by 2, and we get 2L over n. Uh, simple algebra. So the, the, um, the wavelength at any point uh, is going to be twice the length of the string divided by whatever multiple uh, of the wavelength we're looking for. The fundamental frequency is going to be the, the base lambda, where, where n equals 1, OK, when n equals 1. And so since, uh, since frequency equals velocity divided by wavelength, this is, again, review, but you can see how mathematically it works out. Velocity is meters per second. And so if, if, frequent, if uh, wavelength is in meters, then meters per second divided by meters is per second. And that's what frequency is, the number of cycles uh, per second. So if we substitute in um, uh, this, uh, we're going to find that the fundamental frequency uh, is going to, if we, sub if we substitute in lambda into this, we're going to find that the first frequency, the fundamental frequency, is going to equal the velocity uh, of the string divided by um, um, 2L, because NN is going to equal 1 in this case, because we're asking for the base fundamental uh, frequency that this string is capable of. Okay, it's, it's bottom base frequency that it can do. Um, this is called the fundamental uh, frequency of the string. Um, so if you're playing you know, a stringed instrument, this is the base uh, frequency. Now, the thing is, with, with these sorts of things, there are always uh, harmonics and overtones. So we've just said that the fundamental frequency is going to equal whatever uh, multiple uh, n times v over 2l. Um, and so that basically says that, that these other possible 
um, frequencies that the string is going to play are going to be some multiple of this fundamental frequency. So this fundamental frequency gives you the bottom line um, uh, possible frequency for this string, but you're going to have overtones of that uh, that are going to be multiples of that fundamental frequency. So we call these other overtones uh, harmonics, and we call the whole series of these multiples a harmonic series. And these are going on when you're, if you're playing the violin or the piano, if you're uh, playing the cello, you, don't, you not only have the fundamental frequency, but you have, to, to a lesser degree, uh, you have these other um, harmonics that are multiples of that fundamental uh, frequency. So we, F1 is the fundamental frequency, and we call it the first harmonic. Um, but, but then uh, F2, uh, where n equals 2, uh, is going to be the second harmonic, and, and, and where n equals 3 is the third harmonic, and so forth. And we can also call these other ones overtones, but uh, even though we call F1 the first harmonic, it's F2 that we call the first overtone. F3 we call the second overtone, and so forth. And these are going on uh, when you're listening to a piano and when you're listening to um, a stringed instrument. Your, your ear is hearing these overtones uh, that go along with the fundamental uh, uh, frequency. Um, these are all normal modes for such a system uh, because they are multiples you know, of, um, of this um, v over two L's. Okay, so that's what a harmonic is, that's what an overtone is. Uh, so sounds that we hear in the air are usually superpositions of these kind of harmonics all being added together. Um, so we're not just hearing the funda fundamental uh, overtone of the string, but then, you know, a lot of times if you have a cello or, or violin, there'll be a, a hole there that, that gets some richness as the sound echoes inside the actual uh, instrument. So the things that we hear are complex standing waves uh, that come from the adding up of all these, uh, these different waves bouncing, bouncing around. We call these compiled waves, that is the superposition of all these waves, the harmonic content of a sound uh, that we're hearing. And you can analyze these complex waves. It's called harmonic analysis. And if you analyze it mathematically, this is called Fourier, um, Fourier analysis, uh, Fourier analysis. Um, and so the mathematical analysis of the sine functions, you know, taking them apart uh, and graphing them, that's a Fourier, uh, uh, Fourier analysis. Uh, okay, um, so for strings on instruments, just to repeat, the fundamental frequency of a string uh, on an, of an instrument is going to be the velocity uh, divided by twice the length of that string. Um, and if we substitute in for velocity uh, this um, equation uh, from a pre from previous section, uh, velocity equals the square root of the, the tension force of the string divided by that that mu, mu is that has to do with the, the characteristic of the string itself. Um, then we can say that the fundamental frequency is 1 over twice the length of the string times the square root of the tension force divided by that mu characteristic of the string. So there you have uh, a little bit on stringed, uh, uh, the dynamics of string instruments uh, as we finish out this chapter in Young and Friedman's University Physics.